Hello, I'm Will. This is Mike. We're the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And welcome back once again to Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. We've got issue 60 for you here today. In the description of this video, there'll be a timecode to skip straight ahead of the battle report if you like. But there'll also be a timecode to go straight to where we're going to have a look at the whole collection so far. But now we're at issue 60. It's a milestone in the magazine. So we'll be having a look at everything we've got so far. This issue itself came with 10 Poxwalkers and a Plague Marine, armed with either a bolt gun or a plasma gun, depending on how you built him. And this is another sprue from Dark Imperium, or and No No Fear, the starter sets. But heading into the issue now, we've got some stuff on Chaos Knights, which are Imperial Knights, like we learned about before, but that fell to Chaos. Where the, where the Imperial Knights are noble, the Chaos Knights are vindictive and horrible, basically. Ignoble. Ignoble, yeah. And we've got a model showcase here, so, well, the models are just knights, but with spikes all over them and nasty claws and vicious-looking melee weapons and things. And there's actually a knight tyrant there, and the same with the war dog, which is an armager. Then A Glorious History is Battles of the Imperial Fists, the Defenders of Terror. And so this is just some of their things they've done over the millennia, up to the present present time in the in the timeline. Then how to build the new models. Um, the Plague Marine goes together in one or two ways. We've actually got parts previously that should have kept in a safe place that allow you to build either a bolt gunner or a plasma gunner. It uses the same parts that we get with this one, but the two models do look distinct. Parts for the plasma gun came with issue 46. So it's the one with uh, the uh, the Lord Gangra, Lord of Contagion, and the Bloat Drone. The for the bolt parts of the bolt gun were way back on the sprue with the Malignant Plague Caster and the Noxious Blybringer. Issue 34, 33, oh, something, like, something that. like that. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but I made, as, as you probably saw in the intro, I made the plasma gun. And then we've got how to build the Poxwalkers. Most of them are in two parts. There's one that comes in three, but they all just go together fairly straightforward. There's the, yeah, and there you can see the two actual plastic models of the plasma gun on the bolt gun. And the painting guide, pretty much the same as the old box walkers or the ones we got before, but obviously they have slightly different details on them, but the principle is the same. And the Plague Marines likewise. I've had plenty of Plague Marines before. Anyway, so with that over, we're going to have a look at the whole collection now and go through everything we've got so far with the magazine. And here we have the entire collection from 140,000 Conquest over the last 60 issues. Well, at least the models and the terrain and boards and gaming accessories, not including all the paints, brushes and so forth that you get as well. And starting off having a look at the Space Marine Army, we've got 50 models and plenty of characters but a fair number of different troops, units too, and a couple of vehicles. So first of all here at the front we've got the characters. Right at the front we've got two Primaris Captains, one in Gravis armour, one just normal. To the right in the front row is Lieutenant Calcius, the unique Space Marine Lieutenant, and on the left of the front row is the Primaris Librarian. And in the second row we have a Primaris Apothecary, Primaris Lieutenant, the Ancient, and another Lieutenant, all from the Dark Imperium Sprue, and Primaris Chaplain. And in the next row we've got three squads of Primaris Intercessors. The one on the left that you can see at the moment is five from Dark Imperium. And in the centre three easy-to-build models, and then on the right another five from Dark Imperium. And we've got two sets of easy-to-build Primaris Reavers, five Space Marine Scouts with a variety of weapon options, and these have been magnetised so you can swap them over. And behind them we have five Primaris Hellblasters, three Primaris Inceptors, and three Primaris Aggressors, and these are also the easy-to-build models. And in the back row we have a Space Marine Land Speeder, again with a variety of weapon options which have been magnetised. You can see those around the kit, the ones that aren't on it at the moment. An easy-to-build Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought, and three Space Marine bikes, uh, plus an attack bike, which again has a choice of multi-melter or heavy bolter. And that's all of the Space Marines so far with the magazine. And here are the Death Guard forces that we get with the magazine so far. So at the front we've got a variety of characters, in the middle Blade Marines and Poxwalkers and Cultists, and at the back four vehicles. So in the very front row here, we've got Typhus, the Herald of Nurgle, in the centre, flanked by two Lords of Contagion, Lord Felthius, the easy-to-build model, and the Lord of Contagion from Dark Imperium, and also a malignant Plaguecaster on the right there. And then the row behind them, we have three easy-to-build Light Lord Terminators, the Tainted Cohort, that come with Lord Felthius, a Biologos Putrefier, a Foul Blight Spawn, a Noxious Blightbringer, and a Plague Surgeon. Then we have three squads of Plague Marines. We have two sets of easy-to-build Plague Marines and six from Dark Imperium. So that, there's an easy-to-build one there on the left. And in the centre we have six from Dark Imperium, including a Plasma Gunner that we got with this issue. And then on the right, three more easy-to-build Plague Marines. Then behind them we have 12 Poxwalkers. This is two sets of easy-to-build Poxwalkers. And then next to them in the middle, 10 Chaos Cultists. Again, two sets of the easy-to-build Cultists. 
And then on the left again, another 10 Poxwalkers new with this issue, and these are from Dark Imperium. And then finally in the back row we have a fetid bloat drone, a plague burst crawler with a choice of weapons, again which are magnetised, and finally a chaos rhino and a myphitic blight hauler, the latter the easy to build kit once again. And then right at the back we have all the terrain on the screen at the moment. We have the terrain that came with the first board, the cargo deck board, which is three Munitorum armoured containers and their attendant crates and barrels, 12 crates and 9 barrels in total. Then the terrain for the Sector Mechanicus board. There is at the back an Alchemite stack, two Thermic Plasma regulators, and at the front a Hematrope reactor. And then at the back behind the Space Marines we have the kit for the city board. Two sets of riser pattern ruins, which are the black ruins at the back, including the two hatches. On the left a set of Thermic Plasma conduits, and then on the right a set of battlefield accessories with tank traps, ammo boxes, and some barrels. And then finally in the middle there you can see we've got three range rulers, 12 dice, two objective markers. And that is the whole collection so far to issue 60. All right, now we've had a look at that, we'll be on to our mission for this issue, so we're going to go straight into that now. So we head into our mission for this issue. So the battle for Kalon's going against the Space Marines, as uh, you might have noticed if you watched our previous videos, and the Space Marines are attempting to evacuate the city. So in the narrative of the magazine, the third company of the Ultramarines is arriving to distract the main Death Guard forces, while members of the second company conduct a number of, of parting blows against the Death Guard. And you see there's a cameo appearance from the Silver Templars who are holding an evac point. Uh, obviously in our narrative, one of the other temp companies of Silver Templars has come to do the, the distraction, while our captain and friends conduct the surgical strikes. You can see here on the map, um, you can play this mission five times and do a best of five. We're only going to play it once, just like the uh, city map. And yeah, we've got a big, big, nice bit of artwork here and some fiction about the arrival of the Ultramarine Third Company in their narrative. But we'll head into the actual mission, The Parting Blow. So the Death Guard have set up a number of bomb making positions in, in the city and the Space Marines are going to try and destroy some of them before we uh, evacuate the city. So you can see on this map the Death Guard deployment zone is the entire Mechanicus part of the board which is on the left for this time instead of the right as it usually is. And uh, so the Death Guard player has two objectives that they place in their deployment zone. It has to, each objective has to be more than six inches from a board edge and more than eight inches from the other objective. And the, so the Death Guard player deploys all their units first, and the Space Marine player moves on that the opposite edge at the start of the movement phase, so the Space Marines get to go first. So the first player to eliminate an enemy unit gets a victory point, so first blood. Uh, each enemy vehicle eliminated gives you one victory point. Killing the enemy wall gets you a victory point, and each objective is worth two victory points at the end of the game. And as usual, you control an objective if you have the most models within three inches of it. Uh, and if these objectives look familiar, it's because they're the ones from issue 58, just rearranged. As usual, we have three command points. So we'll get into the army overviews and then into Death Guard deployment. So here's our Space Marine army. In the front, we have the Gravis Captain, Lieutenant Calcius, the Primaris Librarian. Finally, we have five Hellblasters, the Redemptive Dreadnought, and a unit of ten Intercessors. And my Warlord will be the Gravis Captain, and I'll give him the Champion of Humanity trait just for a bit of variety, and he might have to fight Felthis. And for Psychic Powers, the Librarian's going to take Psychic Fortress and uh, Might of Heroes, that's the one. And here's our Death Guard army. So we have Lord Felthius, the Malignant Plague Caster, the Tainted Cohort, the Plague Burst Crawler with the Heavy Slugger and Entropy Cannons, a group of seven Plague Marines with one Blight Launcher, uh, one Plasma Gun, and the Champion has a Plasma Gun and a Power Fist, a group of ten Cultists, and a big mob of twenty Poxwalkers. And my Warlord will be Lord Felthius. He's going to have a revoltingly resilient, usually reliable Warlord trait. And my Malignant Plague Caster for his Psychic Powers will have Miasma of Pestilence and Putrescent Vitality. So, quick overview of our, our board. As you can see, it's, it's the other way around. Wow. Something special for the final issue. And you can also see here the two objectives that the Death Guard players to place. There's one here next to this Plasma Regulator. And one over here next to the other plasma regulator. Yeah, I could place them anywhere in my deployment zone more than 8 inches from a board edge. Or more than 6 inches from a board edge, sorry. But uh, there's not really any reason to place them anywhere further forward than they need to be. So. And you can see the Death Guard have finished deploying as well. Yeah, so we've got our big unit of 20 pox walkers at the front. They're just about out of 
the danger zone of being shot at by intercessors when they come onto the board. Cultists behind them, plague marines over here on near this objective, the plague burst crawler on the other side, and the malignant plague caster in the middle. And then we've got Lord Felthius and the Sainted Cohort in the teleportarium. So the Space Marines don't deploy on the board, they move on their first turn, so we'll head into Space Marines, turn one. So, first things first, my own phase Dreadnought's just going to move on normally over here into this bit of area terrain. And everyone else in my arm is going to advance, so I'll roll each one right now. We've got the Intercessors, get to go an extra four. The Hellblasters, an extra one. The Captain, an extra six. The Librarian, an extra five. And Calcius, an extra five as well. So there we are, the Intercessors have moved on their full ten inches. Uh, in a big long line, hopefully to make it harder to bring in the Terminators. Uh, the characters have moved up just behind them. Uh, the Captain and the Lieutenant Calcius are with both within six of the Dreadnought for their auras. And the Librarian's just going to stand behind the Intercessors. Oh, and the Hellblasters have come in in the area terrain. And in the Psychic phase I'm not actually going to try manifesting any powers just in case I get a Perils of the Warp. We'll be straight on to the Shooting phase. And the only shooting I have is the Dreadnought. It's going to fire its heavy onslaught Gatling cannon at the Poxwalkers. So it's got 12 shots, hitting on 4s, 3 rolling 1s, because it moved. And it's within range of the Captain. Re rolling the 1s into another hit. So that'll be 7 hits. Wounding on 3s, re rolling 1s. 7 wounds. Right. So just to see how you've done it. Made 1. So that's uh, 6, six dead, dead Poxwalkers. Yeah, so. um, I'll take 3 from each end at the front, I think. Just and with that, uh, that'll be the end of my turn, so it'll be on to Death Guard, turn one. I'm going to start by advancing with these Poxwalkers, because they need to, I might need to get that Blight Launch in range. So, they were all five. So the Poxwalkers moved up, and then the Plague Marines needed an advance, but only a one inch advance. So I didn't bother rolling it, I just moved the guy six inches, so that's his minimum advance and that's enough. Mm. I didn't want to go any that's further. That's all they were going to go. So. Yeah, I didn't want to go any further than that. And I'll play Cloud of Flies on them as well for a command point. Mm -hmm. Death Guard down to two. And the rest of my movement, the movement plate caster has moved up and the cultists have moved up behind as well. In the psychic phase, I'm gonna try to start by like, trying to cast me out some pestilence on the poxwalkers. So a six. Gonna get with a seven. Yep. So that's passed on them, and I'm gonna try and manifest putrescent vitality as well, which on the poxwalkers. It goes off on a six, and I roll a six. So that's got a pox poxwalkers is now uh, strength four, toughness four, and uh, minus one to hit. Yep. Start shooting with the Plague Burst Crawler. We're going to fire the two Entropy Cannons at the Dreadnought. Yep. Uh, the Mortar at the Intercessors and the Heavy Slug at the Intercessors as well. Okay. So two Entropy Cannons hitting on fours. They both hit. They wound on threes. One of them wounded. I won't re-roll that. I'll just leave it as it is. And it's D6 damage for one. I will re-roll that. Okay. Down to one command point. Six. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so it's down to seven wounds. Then we've got the uh, Plague Burst Mortar on the Intercessors. It does its D6 shots for four. These hit on fours. One. Wounds on a two. It did. Five plus armor save. Well, made it. And then the Heavy Slugger has four shots on fours. Two hits. Wounding on threes. Nothing. And finally, we've got the Blight Launcher at the Intercessors as well. Ignoring the penalty for advancing because we're Death Guards. So two hits on threes. And uh, wounding on threes. Rerolling ones. Still work one wound. Five plus armor save again. Ah. Well made that as well. And that'll be it for my turn. So be on to Space Marines turn two. So here I've finished my movement. The Intercessors have moved up, uh, maintaining their long line formation. Uh, the Librarian has moved up behind them. The Hellblasters have come through the wall. The Captain and Countess have gone over there so that they can maintain range with the Dreadnought, who's gone off onto the far opposite side of the board. Hopefully to get some cover from the Alchemite stack, because its, its rules are actually going to come into a, come be relevant in this game. But with that over, it's on to the Psychic phase. So to begin with, I'm going to try and manifest Psychic Fortress on the Intercessors. So we need a Warp Charge value of 5 for Psychic Fortress. No, nope, don't get it with a 4, I'm not going to bother re-rolling it. And then I will try to manifest Smite, and it will help the Poxwalkers if it's successful. And I need a 5, get it with a 9. You're on range to the 9. I am, so on a 10. Nope. So D3 mortal wounds to the Poxwalkers. Two. Ignoring them on fives. No. Oh. Two more dead Poxwalkers. We'll get rid of these ones. So we'll start the shooting phase off with the Dreadnought. It's going to fire at the Cultists. And the only weapon in range is the Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon. So we've got 12 shots hitting on fours, re-rolling ones because of the Captain. 
two ones. Oh, no, we roll into ones, so there we go. Well, that's nine hits. Wounding on threes, you're rolling ones. Hmm. So that's six wounds, six dead cultists. Yes, because now I'm safe from this. So we'll take away the useless melee people, and then uh, I guess... So I'll do the intercessors next. Uh, we're not quite in rapid fire range of the poxwalkers, so we're going to try and finish off those cultists. We've got ten bolt rifle shots hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. You're rolling the one into a three, so it's eight hits. Wounding on threes, you're rolling ones. There they go. So six wounds, so the remaining four cultists are destroyed. And that'll be first blood, so victory point for the space marines. And finally, the only other red unit we're to shoot is the Hellblasters, and they're going to shoot at the Plague Burst Crawler. And we are going to overcharge. So I'll do these all individually just in case. So Hellblaster number one, hitting on three drawing ones. He hits. Hellblaster number two, hits. Hellblaster number three, he misses. Hellblaster number four, hits. And Sarge, hits. So that's four hits. We're only on fours because it's toughness eight and we're strength eight and we're re-rolling ones because of the lieutenant. Three wounds. Uh, I get my five plus invulnerable save, which I've made one of, so that's four damage potentially. So ignoring these on fives. I've ignored one, so that's three damage. So Plague Bruce Crawler is down to nine wounds. And with that, uh, we're not close enough for any charges, so we'll be on to Death Guard turn two. So I'm not actually going to move very much, the Poxwalkers have rearranged a bit, the Plague Marines have moved up to get them all, themselves all within rapid fire range. I've played Cloud of Flies on the Plague Marines, so that's my last command point used with that. The Plague Bus Crawler will stay where it is, yep. uh, and then at the end of the movement phase I am going to bring in Lord Felthius and the Tainted Co-op. And then yeah, I'm just going to bring them down there. So onto the Psychic phase. Uh, we'll start with Wizarding Pass Miasma of Pestilence on the Tainted Co-op this time. Mm -hmm. So this will be on a 6. That's an 11, that'll do. Yep. And I'm going to try and deny that. <laughs> And I'm going to cast Pike's Putrescent Vitality on the Poxwalkers again, because I'm just out of range for Smite. Didn't think about that in the movement phase, but never mind. That's a 7, so that does go off, but you can try and deny that if you want. And I need uh, an 8, because I'm not within 12. Nope. So those both successfully manifested, and we'll be on to the shooting phase. Start with the Plague Burst Crawler. We'll do the same as before, so the Entropy Cannons at the Dreadnought and the other guns at the Intercessors. Yep. So the Entropy Cannons on 4s. One hit this time. And on a 3. Yep. Uh, you do get a 6 plus yeah, save. 6 plus armor save from the Alchemite stack. Come on! No, oh, so quite. close. D6 damage. 2. So Dreadnought's down to 5. It's in its middle bracket now. Yeah. Then we've got the Plague Burst Mortar. Gets 1 shot. I can't re-roll it. It hits on a 4. Nope. And the Heavy Slugger. 4s. Or they hit at least. 3s. <laughs> 2 wounds at minus 1. So 2 4 plus armor saves. Right, I made 1. Failed 1. An intercessor takes a wound, and it will be this man all the way over here. Next we'll do the Tainted Cohort, we'll fire both combi bottles at the intercessors. So, hitting on threes, eight shots, that's five hits. Wounding on fours, two. Two three plus armor saves. Made both. We'll do the Plague Marines also at the intercessors with everything. So we've got uh, eight ball gun shots to start with. There's a guy on a wound. Three hits, three good is. job Plague Marines. Wounding on fours, one. Three plus. Yep. No. Oh well. uh, he'll die. Uh, next we've got the Blight Launcher on threes. Double two. Oh, phew. And we've got four plasma gun shots which won't be supercharged. There's one, so that's a good thing. Three hits, wounding on threes. Two wounds. Two six plus armor saves. Oh, roll off a six. Another intercessor goes down. Take this man here. Uh, that's it for my turn, because I'm not in range to charges. No more shooting. Yep, so it's on to Space Marines turn three. So there we are, we've all moved up normally for the Space Marines. The Intercessors have abandoned their long line formation because we don't need to stop the Terminators coming in now. Yeah, slight adjustment there to make sure they're all in coherency. And the Hellblasters have moved up as well. The Librarian slotted in behind the Intercessors and he's just closer to the Terminators than the Poxwalkers. The Captain's moved up behind for his aura. And the Dreadnought's moved up at six because it's in his middle bracket. Get a bit closer over here. And Lieutenant Cassidy has just moved over there to help it out a little bit with rerolling ones so we're not expecting great things from it this turn. But with that over, it's on to the Psychic Fangs. So first off, I'm going to try and manifest Psychic Fortress on the Intercessors. Needing a 5. Got it with an 8. Yep, you can have that. And then I will try to manifest Smite. Got it with a 6. 
I'll try and deny it. I am in range, so needing seven. Got it for the twelve. For the twelve, there you go. Smite does not manifest. And now we're on to the shooting phase. Let's start with the intercessors. We're going to rapid fire at the poxwalkers. So we've got 16 shots, hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. That's a lot of twos. Hmm. Rerolling that one into hits, so that's nine hits. Wounding on fours because of Prochescent Vitality, but rerolling ones because of the Lieutenant. That's six wounds. Uh, disgustingly resilient, I've made two, so four dead. And we'll take these ones on the far end. And I'll do the Dreadnought next, and it'll also shoot at the Poxwalkers. So 2d6 shots from the Frankstorm Grenade Launchers, three, hitting on fours, wounding on fours, rerolling ones, it wounded. And no, it didn't go down. And the heavy onslaught Gatlin cannon, 12 shots, hitting on fives. And looks like three hits. Still wounding on threes though, rerolling ones. Two wounds. Disgustingly resilient. Nope, two more dead. Carry on taking from this end over here. Mm -hmm. Hell Blasters next. Uh, they're going to shoot at the Terminators. Uh, we're not going to overcharge, so I can roll them all at the same time. And we don't blow up on twos because of the minus one hit from Eyes and Pestilence. So we've got ten shots hitting on fours, re rolling ones. Re rolling the ones into two more hits. Six in total, wounded on threes, re rolling ones. Roll the two ones into mid. So three wounds. Four plus in honorable save. I've made all of them. And finally, the librarian will fire his bolt pistol at the Terminators as well, hitting on four. So, shooting phase over onto the charge phase, the intercessors will declare a charge on the Poxwalkers. So, they need an eight to get in. Uh, not with a four, well, I'm not going to bother rerolling it. So, and the Dreadnought will also declare a charge on the Poxwalkers, can't forget about him. He needs a, a decent roll though. Oh, an eight. Yeah, he needed a ten, so I'm not going to bother rerolling, try and get a six. So that will be the end of my turn, on to Death Guard turn 3. So this is my movement, the Tainted Cohort and Lord Felthius have moved up there 4 towards the Space Marines. Poxwalkers have come with them, in the last 6. Plague Marines have moved back to try and form a kind of second line of defence with the Plague Caster and the Plague Burst Crawler will not move, so we'll be onto the Psychic Phase. We can try the same thing as last turn, so I'm going to try Miasma of Pestilence on the Terminators first. Goes off on six. Ooh, oh, perils. perils. And I don't I can't re-roll that, I've got any command points. So he so he takes three mortal wounds, Ooh. maybe. Uh, yeah, he does. Whoa. He's down to one. Down to one. Try to blow his own brains out. And we'll try to do perhaps Petrescent Vitality on the Pox Walkers again. Oh. <laughs> um, well, I thought you would be funny if that happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well it goes off. Yeah. I can't re-roll it. So he just takes another D3 mortal wounds. One, so, oh, which, which he might ignore. Come on. Yeah, yes. he does. So um, he blows up. Uh, he doesn't get the power off because if he's slain by Perils of the Warp, then it doesn't go off. And everything within six inches of him also takes D3 mortal wounds. So that'll be the Plague Marines and the Plague Burst Crawler. Okay. We'll do the Plague Burst Crawler first. We'll try again. Do the Plague Burst Crawler first. It takes two, maybe. Ignored one, so it's down to eight. And the Plague Marines. Three. Three. Oh. Okay, they only take one. Yeah, so one bolt gonna die. Take him in the middle, I think. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to carry on anyway. Uh, we're going to shoot the Plague Burst Crawler at the Dreadnought. Well, the, the Entropy Cannons at the Dreadnought. The other guns at the... Um, oh, we'll go for the Hell Blasters now, I think. Yeah. So Entropy Cannons on fours. Well, they both hit. They wound on threes. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. So we're just going to take 2d6 damage. Uh, ten. Yeah, so it's dead. It might blow up because there are people within. On a six. No. Yeah. So Dreadnought dies. And that's a victory point for the Death Guard, though, for killing a vehicle. Yes. And the mortar at the uh, Hellblasters gets one shot again. Hey. Hits on a four. No. Nope. Hey. <laughs> and the slugger, uh, that no, gets three hits. Better. This is the best gun, yeah. clearly. Uh, only one wound. Four plus armor save. Nope. No, I'm not going to reroll it. Man at the back. Uh, I've managed to move the Plague Marines out of rapid fire range of the Hellblasters, but I'm going to shoot at them anyway. Uh, so we'll start with the bolt guns because there's a guy on a wound. On threes, that's two hits. Winning on fours, that's one. Three plus. Yeah. No. I will actually roll that, just in case. Yeah, you may. Yeah. You've made it into success. Two plasma guns next, then. On not supercharging. One hit. We're on three. Nope. Which means I don't have to wait to waste the light launcher on him. Two hits. Two wounds. Five plus. Right, so you made one. So yeah, the wounded hell blaster dies. I reckon that command point paid off. Hmm. 
And then we'll do the Terminators next. The Plague Spewer is only in range of the uh, Intercessors, so it'll shoot them. Um, and the other guns will go at the Hell Blasters. Yep. So we'll do the Plague Spewer first. Six hits. Oof. Um, we're reading on threes, we're rolling <laughs> ones. Wow, okay. Two wounds. Wow, two wounds. Four plus armor saves. Make one third one. I uh, won't be rolling anything. Uh, him then. Okay. Then we got the combi bolters at the hell blasters. On threes, that's six hits. Uh, winning the fours. Two. Two. Two three plus armor saves. Yep. Made both. So that'll be it for shooting. Onto the charge phase. The Terminators will declare a charge at the intercessors. And yeah, nobody else. Okay. So the intercessors over what? We've got 16 bolt rifle shots hitting on sixes. We're rolling ones. Oh, we got five hits so far. We roll, get another hit. So six hits, wounding on fives. You're rolling ones. Blimey, four wounds. Uh, three plus armor saves for this. Yeah, it's one. So one wound, disgustingly resilient. Nope, it takes a wound. Put it on the blade spear man. Yep. And then their charge roll. Here's a seven. That's just enough. Yeah, it's enough to get them in. So they complete their charge like that, leaving room for Felthius, who also needs a six. Gets it, just. just. And the Poxwalkers will have a go as well. Don't know what they're going to need, but measure if it's relevant. Five, probably. They complete their charge like so. I guess I better start with Lord Felthius, because he's the dangerous one. He'll pile in that way. He's going there. He has four attacks on twos. Uh, three hits. He I mean, doesn't usually get to death of the false emperor. And three wounds. Six plus armor saves. Didn't make any of them. So D3 damage. So Wounded Man dies. Wounded Man dies, second one takes three, and the third one takes two. So Three dead intercessors. So Wounded Man, take away these two. Because you've killed them, I'm going to have to consolidate him here, so that when the Terminators pile in, they can actually... So this doesn't impede their movement, yeah. apart from if they're charging or advancing, so I'm actually going to take that away briefly. Well, no, even then, because they're not vehicles. Because they're not vehicles, yeah, so it basically doesn't, isn't relevant. So I'm just going to move him in there keeping him an inch away from the librarian. And he will come in here, and he will go there, and he will bring the Hell Blasters in. Yep. Like that, but stay an inch away from the librarian. And then they get to fight. We'll do the bubotic axe first on three, so that's one hit. It wins on a three. Yep. And minus two. Five plus. Made it. The Bale Sword on threes. That's, a, that's another hit. It wins on a four. That's another wound. Six plus. Nope. I should put it on that guy there. And the man no melee weapon hits twice, winning on fours. One. Three plus. Yep. Yep. The Poxwalkers have got 12 attacks on fives. They've got two hits. Uh, they're winning on fives, so I didn't get pre and Vitality off now. Double three. Nothing. Pick the intercessors and they will pile in a little bit, I think. Yeah. So the guy at the back, the wounded man won't be able to fight, but the other four can. And they're going to put all their attacks on the Poxwalkers. So we got nine attacks hitting on threes. We're rolling ones. So the captain. Roll that one. It's five hits. Only on three drawing ones. Okay, they're all wounded. And disgusting you've done it. Made two, so three plus walkers go down. And I will take the ones at the back, obviously. And then the hell blasters get to go next. You can see it'll shuffle over a bit. So they have nine attacks hitting on three drawing ones. We roll all those ones. So that's two extra hits, so we got six in total. Wounding on five drawing ones. Rolling that one. Yep. One wound. And he's fine. So that's the end of the fight phase of Death Guard turn three onto Space Marines turn four. So we finished our movement. The Hellblasters are going to fall back out of melee, but the Intercessors are going to stay where they are, as is the Librarian. Uh, Cassius has come down to get everyone within his aura, and the Captain has come along here to get a charge route towards Felthius. So with movement over it, it's on to the psychic phase. Uh, first off, the librarian will try to manifest smite. Needs a five. Gets it with a six. Find out psychers. D3 mortal wounds. Two. So you, yeah, and you kill off the terminator who's got a wound, so yeah. Yeah. Oh Then he will try to manifest might of heroes on the captain. Needing a six. Got it with an eight. So there, might of heroes are successful. It's on to the shooting phase. So, uh, the intercessors, I'll do them first. They're going to fire their bolt pistols at the Poxwalkers. Sh uh, five shots hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. And they all hit. And wounding on threes, you're rolling ones. They're all wounded. Barney. 
Uh, yeah, that's the, just mm-hmm. perfectly enough. So the Foxwalkers go down. Hellblast is going to shoot at the Playbrings. We're not within rapid fire range, and I'm not going to overcharge so we don't blow ourselves up. So we've got four shots hitting on fours re-rolling ones. That's two hits. We're only on threes re-rolling ones. Two wounds. So straight to disgusting resilient. And you kill two. So, well, um, bolt guns, so we're going to take these two from this end. So my characters don't want to shoot at. So in the charge phase, the captain will declare a charge on the Terminators and Lord Felthius. He needs a four. He gets a, gets a seven, so that will definitely be enough. So the captain finishes his charge like that. Then the librarian will also do the same. He'll charge the Terminators and the and Lord Felthius. He gets a five. So five inches gets him to there. So you can pile in into Felthius next turn. I mean the charge five phase rather. And Calcius will do something in this game and charge the Terminators. Um, with a nine, he's definitely in. So that's all my charges. It's on to the fight phase. Captain will come in like that. And I will play, spend a command point to play Death to the Traitors so that he gets a, possibly gets a chance for extra attacks, but it costs me a command point, so I'm down to one. Yeah, so he has six attacks because of Might of Heroes, hitting on twos because he has a weapon skill of two plus, but he's minus one to hit for his Bolt Storm Gauntlet, but then plus one to hit for Champions of Humanity. So six attacks, re rolling one, uh, hitting on twos, re rolling ones, sixes explode like Death of the Force Emperor. No, no sixes, re rolling that one, no. No, so just six hits. Wounding on twos because we're strength. Well, we're strength 10 and we get plus one to wound anyway. And re rolling ones because of Calcius. That is six wounds. So, four plus invulnerable saves. Uh, oh, I only made two. So that's 4d3 damage. Mm. That is uh, 11 wounds. 11, four plus disgusting re- revolting resilience. Yeah. I have failed. Five. Yeah. So, so you're down to one wound. Well, I'll move that dice you just put there out of the way because the librarian's going next. <laughs> and he'll pile in so you can fight Felthius as well. So he has four attacks hitting on threes. Three rolling ones, good thing. They all hit. Wounding on fives. Three rolling ones, come on. Oh, two wounds. These are four pluses as well. Oh, okay. 2d3 damage. Six. Come on. <coughs> Made a good yes. attempt, but he goes down. Felthius dies. And that's a point. And there is a victory point for the Space Marines for Slay the Warlord. So we're up to two. And then Calcius gets to go next. He has four attacks. Hitting on twos, you're rolling ones. They all hit. Wounding on fives, you're rolling ones. You're rolling that one. It's two wounds. Terminators also have a four plus. No, they can't make it either. One damage each. And you, you wound somebody. Well, he's a sword man. It's not going to matter very much. Mm-hmm. And then the intercessors get to fight, so they'll pile in. They'll pile in like that. And they have 11 attacks, hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. No, I won't use death for the traitors. Rerolling the ones into ten hits. Now roll all those fives and sixes again. Rerolling on fives, rerolling ones. Nothing at all. But that's the end of all my fighting, so the Terminators get to go. Yeah. They'll put everything on the Librarian, I think, because I don't really care that much about Calcius. Okay. So we've got uh, two attacks with the axe, two hits. Rerolling on threes, they both hit. Five, plus, on, five plus armor save. Made one, killed one. I won't re-roll that, so he's down to four. Oh, yeah. And sword, on threes, one hit, wounding on four yeah and that's it for the end for space marines turn four on to death guard turn four so in my moving phase um i can technically fall the terminators back but they just get well actually it's not clear we haven't measured it i might actually struggle to get them outside of an inch of everybody because they're so slow so but i need them to stay in melee anyway because these intercessors have to be tied up so mm-hmm. take the risk that they'll die basically and the plague marines have just moved back a bit to try and get as far away from the captain as possible so we'll be on to my shooting phase I'll start with the Plague Burst Crawler. It's going to shoot everything at the captain because he is the closest target and he's not engaged anymore. Yes. So we've got two entropy cannons on fours. One hit. Your wounds on a three because might have hit. Oh, actually, it doesn't matter. He's tough as five anyway. Yeah. Did wound. Four plus invulnerable save. Made it. D6 shots from the mortar. Oh, six. Oh. Oh, makes up for the two yeah. ones. Only shooting extremes. Oh, uh, got three, three hits. That's average. average. Wounding on threes. Oh. oh. Try to get them in the box. Oh. Triple two. And uh, the slugger on fours. All right. Oh, it's failed you. Even that's failing me. And we've on a no. uh, four of, th- of three, I can't remember, but it didn't. And, uh, and I guess the plague will shoot at him as well. Mm-hmm. We'll start with the blight launcher. 
Uh, one hit. Oh, that's good. Wins on a four because he's up to six at the moment. Oh, it did. Four plus invulnerable save. Yes. Yep. Come on, Captain. You know what? I'm going to overcharge the plasma guns. So we'll do the champion first. Yes, Oof. double hit. The non champion. He Blows dies. Well. New, new guy dies, but he did get a hit. They wound on threes. Oh, twos and ones. Oh. No, no, so one wound. One wound. Four plus invulnerable save. Made it. Can't do anything to him. <laughs> so the plasma gunner dies. Oh, no. And the bolt gun. That got a hit. Wounds on a five. Nope. And then that's it for my shooting. In the fight phase, I get to pick the Terminators first and then put everything on the librarian again. Yep. Do have enough attacks to kill him, technically. That's the axe. It only hit once. It wounded. Five plus armor save. Nope. Goes down to three. And the sword. Double hit. Wounds on fours. Uh, one wound at minus four because. So he takes a wound. Or, or a down, thrust. Down to two. I'll do Calcius first because he might kill that wounded Terminator. Mm. So Calcius has four attacks hitting on twos, you're running ones. They will hit. When you're on fives, you're on ones. You had a good turn last time. Whoa. Oh, two wins. Still not bad. I've uh, made one fail one, disgusting new resilient. Nope. Yes. You kill the sword man. And then the librarian has four attacks on the remaining Terminator, hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. Three hits. When you're on fives, you're rolling ones. Oh, we got one. We're rolling the one. Nope. One wound. Four plus. Two. Oh. Oh, and the intercessors, I forgot about them. They're, they're not going to pile in because I think they can all fight. 11 attacks from the intercessors, hitting on threes, you're on ones. 10 hits. Only on fives, you're running ones. A couple of ones. He rolls into another one, so that's four wounds. Two plus armor. No, they were right. Yeah, it's fine. And that is the end of Death Guard turn four. On to Space Marines turn five. So this is my final movement phase of the game. The Hellblasters and the Captain have just moved up. Uh, everyone else has fallen back out of melee with the Terminator. Fortunately, the Librarian can't get uh, can't get far enough away from the Terminator to smite anyone else. Anyway, so first off, the Librarian will try to manifest Smite. Needs a five, gets a six. D3 mortal wounds to that Terminator. Three. Oh, he lives. He lives on one wound. And then he'll try to manifest Might of Heroes on the Captain, just for the sake of it. Gets it with a nine. On to the shooting phase. The Intercessors will shoot at the Plague Marines. Ten shots from bolt rifles. Hitting on fours, re-rolling ones. Re-rolling the one into a miss. So that's seven hits. Me on fives, re-rolling ones. So that's four wounds, four, four plus armor saves. Failed three. Ooh. That's enough to kill them. Ah, uh, oh, oh. dies. Ah, yeah. yeah. So the Librarian will fire his bolt pistol at the Plague Marines. One shot hitting on a four, we're running ones. He missed. Uh, the Captain will fire his bolt storm gauntlet at them as well. Three shots hitting on twos, we're running ones. They will hit. When you're on fives, you're running ones. Two wounds. Three plus. Double oh, one. Come on! Ah. Oh. <laughs> So close. So the Hellblasters are going to shoot at the Plague Marines because uh, they're easy to kill. I mean, they could potentially kill the Plague Burst Crawler and that would effectively gain me three victory points because it would deny the Death, the death Guard that objective and get me a victory point for killing it. But they're much easier to kill. Hellblast number one, two shots hitting on threes, rolling ones. That's one hit. Hellblast number two, two hits. Hellblast number three, two hits. And Sarge. Two hits. Oh, That's God. seven hits. Wounding on threes, you're rolling ones. So you're all wounded. <laughs> That's 14 disgustingly resilient. Yep, so two at a time. That's one dead. And two dead. Wow. Yeah, the plague marines go down, denying the death god that objective. Oh, well, Calcius will throw a grenade at <laughs> the Terminator. I forgot about him. May as well, yeah. <laughs> they throw a crank grenade, hits on a four, three rolling ones. Missed. Yep. So it's going to come down to this charge. If I can get a model into contact with the Plague Burst Crawler, uh, I can deny the Death Guard that objective. So we're going to start with the Captain because he's got the best chance. He needs to roll a 9 and uh, hopefully he won't get overwatched to death. Yes, yeah, so we better do that. You don't get the mortar at least. No, because he's within 12. So the entropy cannons get a hit. Oh no. Uh, wounding on a 3, yes. 4 plus invulnerable save. No, nope. I'll take it. Okay, you'll take it. So D6 damage. No, no, I'll try and get the box. Three, okay. You did. Yeah, down to three. And then the slugger has uh, two, well, hits. two hits. It can't actually kill it. Three on fives. 
Yeah, it is. Because uh, he's got my heroes up, so yeah. Four plus a goal save. Make yeah, that. Phew. And then his charge. It's a seven, so I'm going to have to re roll that too. Yes! Eleven! There he is, he's in. And then the Hellblasters will charge as well just to, just to seal the deal. Uh, they need a ten. No. So the captain gets to fight, he has six attacks. I'll use the Bolt Storm Gauntlet. Because even if the, the plague burst, if I kill it, I get a victory point anyway. And even if the plague burst crawler explodes and kills him, I'll still be ahead on victory points. So we've got six attacks, hitting on threes, we're rolling ones. Five hits. Uh, wounding on threes, because I'm strength 10. Well, that's four wounds. Uh, it has a five plus in vulnerable yep. save. Which is made one off, so 3d3 damage. 3d3 damage. Probably can't kill it. Uh, that's six. And ignoring these on fives. Oh, it takes five. Now it's down to three wounds. So it's down to its middle bracket. It still gets three attacks, hitting on sixes. No. Okay. So that is the end of Space Marines turn five. On to Death Guard turn five. Yeah. So if I fall back, I don't get the objective. Uh, the only way I can get the objective is to kill the captain in melee. Yep. Yeah. Because I can't shoot for fall back, obviously. So we're just going to try and do that again. So I need to triple six. No. So the captain lives. I mean, you can fight it if you want. Yeah, I might as well see if I can kill it. Yeah. So we still got my heroes. So we've got six attacks, hitting on threes, you're on ones. Five hits again. Really on threes, because we're still trying to strength ten with the gauntlet. Uh, only two wounds. Five plus. Oh. Two D three damage. Six. Well, that's one way to kill it. Uh, so it's only got three wounds left. Oh, and it, it oh. dies. And it blows up. Oh, it might be on a five actually. So on a five, it blows up. Oh, it did. It did. What do I D three mortal wounds. Yeah. <laughs> so the captain dies. <laughs> but so, so. Best ending. Yeah. So the captain dies in the explosion. But you get a victory point for killing it. So I get a victory point for killing the Plague Burst Crawler because it's a vehicle, but then the Death Guard get a victory point for killing the Captain. So that will end in a Space Marines victory for the first time in what seems like forever. Three victory points to two. So we'll recap that for you now. So that was the mission for issue 60 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. How did you think that went? For me, it didn't go very well, I think. Yeah. Um, my shooting was not very good. It's pretty, oh, yeah. The Plague Burst Crawler didn't... It killed the Dreadnought, but the, the rest of its guns didn't really do anything all game. My Psycho blew himself up, two perils in the same psychic yeah. phase. And even then, it still felt like it was quite hard for you. But I, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to take anything away from you because you, you know, I think you played really well and pulled off a victory in what I think on paper is a very difficult mission yeah, for Space Marines. Just for the sheer distance. I mean, technically, the Death Guard player could be nice and put his objectives right right on the edge of his deployment zone. It's true, yeah. But uh, I, I don't know why I would do why that. Why would you do that? So, I mean, basically you have to run across the entire board. Yeah. And even little stuff like having to move on in the first turn rather than start having a six inch deployment zone, it's just an extra six inches you have to move. Yeah. And I'd probably be able to get in stuff into range to shoot in that first turn rather than advancing. Yeah, exactly. Because if you, if, you, if they let you deploy second, then it's not like I would be reacting to your deployment mm. anyway. Then you go first anyway. So, it, yeah, it's kind of a bit strange. I knew at some point during the game you were going to make you were going to have to make a charge to get to that far because it's such a long distance, and I knew you were likely to do it. So I tried to set it up so put a big speed yeah. bump in the way. I say if I hadn't killed Feltius and the captain didn't get unengaged, you would have won because the captain would have been able to get out of that engagement. That's probably true. And I mean, you roll pretty well. For, you roll pretty well in melee with your characters generally. Um, well, I think I rolled pretty well all game to be honest. I, guess I made so, a lot yeah. of armor saves and vulnerable saves and wounds. And I think you rolled pretty poorly in comparison, at least. And actually, you survived. Your captain survived my entire shooting of a plague burst crawler yeah. and and a load of plague marines in my turn four. Yeah. Well, and there are other things as well. Actually, like the dreadnought did actually quite well, good with its shooting. It killed quite a lot of pox walkers. Yeah. Because of course, yeah, the new thing this issue, I had a big unit of twenty pox walkers, and they took a long time to die. That is actually quite a scary unit if it gets into melee, assuming it's fully intact, and especially if you could get it into melee with um, the dead walk again. Yeah. Like even if there's like 15 of them left, and you have putrescent vitality on them. Yeah, strength four, hitting on fours, they can start to yeah, actually... And they've got two attacks each, yeah. Yeah, they can really start to pile up the dice, and then you um, then, then then they might grow in size again, that's mm. the thing. I think perhaps I felt like I squandered my command points a little early on. I can't remember, I, can't, I used Cloud of Flies twice, which to be fair, probably was a good yeah, play. And you re-rolled one damage into six. That's true. Oh yeah, I did six damage on the Dreadnought, so... But towards the end, I kind of wished I might have had something like... Um, well, I mean, re-roll either of those two perils of the warp, mm. actually. Yeah, you could have saved your Psyker. Could have saved him. That was actually a defining moment, because if I'd had a Psyker towards the end of the game as well, I mean, it might have just been take, a different... Take wounds off things. And, and Miasma Pestilence, obviously, is it, it, always useful. 
at the beginning of course I played everything on my pox walkers and you just didn't shoot them which I think was probably fair enough mm -hmm. but at least well, you can shoot them I'd say I wanted to get first blood just to get a victory point and I did move the cultists up into range which perhaps in hindsight I should have literally just kept them in the back corner to have some bodies, spare bodies and not to give you first blood I think that's the key thing because if you hadn't got first blood and I had I would have won 3-2 to two, even yeah. if for the same result so actually yeah yeah, we, we had missions where somebody's had to run all the way across the board before and we usually say, oh, it's just really difficult, it's, it's hard, yeah. you have to play well and roll well at the same time to really have a chance. It's certainly harder for the Space Marines because you, you, yeah. you die quick, hard, easier than the Death Guard. Yeah, and although the Death Guard are actually are, are quite a slow army, they do have some fast things like the Rhino yeah. and the Bellman. Can actually make stuff come, go along at a fair lick, you'd le losing less shooting, because with the Space Marines, if you're advancing a unit of 10 intercessors, well, that's all their, all their shots yeah. not doing anything. The same with Hellblasters. And the Dreadnought, if it moves, doesn't shoot as well. Yeah, so, and, and I mean, if you advance the plague, means you only lose a, a plasma gun. My new plasma gun, well, he got a hit with his overcharged yep, plasma gun, and he killed himself. But who cares, he's a great model. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's nice to have, I mean, you had the choice to make him as a bolt gun or a plasma gun, and you very kindly gave me a better weapon. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's more a more interesting choice. We'll get the bolt gunner. Oh, we've seen bolt gunners before. So yeah, all in all, although I lost, I'm kind of happy with that. And we had a dramatic ending as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, a lot of the more recent missions... Well, I don't want to say they're stacked in favour of the Death Guard, but it does seem to be fitting the narrative that the Space Marines are leaving, right, or abandoning Kalon, so... Yeah, because actually that's the end of our uh, Kalon games, yeah, actually. So on this map, we'll be moving to the, adding the extra board next one. I will say it did seem like it um, wasn't really making full use of the entire size of the board. It still felt quite small. Yeah, that's true. It, it's, a funny, it's funny that, isn't it? Because double the space, and yet for a lot of the games, we were playing in the same bit of the map. Yeah. One, one thing I will say about the Mechanicus map is that um, starting on it every mission sucks because there's no cover. <laughs> it's not really that interesting a battlefield. And it's kind of disappointing that none of the missions we got made use of the, ha the new hatch. No, there's a hatch on the board, but it just didn't do anything. And, um, yeah, and if you look at some of the maps and stuff in the fiction, you can see that there's the river running through Kalon and it shows that the bridges have been destroyed in some of the later issues. So it's a shame there wasn't like a bridge destruction mission either with yeah. that uh, printed terrain piece. It only showed up once. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, in, on this map, we started off with a few boring capture the terrain pieces. Yeah, there was, there, was the, there was one mission where it was just the mechanics map, which was really, really imbalanced against the Death Guard, just for, by force composition. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. Then there were loads of capture the terrain piece, or capture some crank cargo containers, which we had a couple of times as well. Then we had a load of gimmick missions. Yeah, we had things like the scout mission, and then the civil war with the Death Guard, and uh, the one with the bridge with the bikes. Yeah, and then another scout mission with the cultists. Yeah. Yeah, and then the next ten were bigger battles, but uh, we, there were a lot of missions where we just saw the Lord of Contagion, the captain, over and over again. Yeah, in fact, I think I've had a Lord of Contagion for like the last five missions in a row, yeah. and before that, I had Typhus, who's also who basically Lord yeah, of Contagion. Yeah, he's basically uh, Lord of Contagion, but better. Yeah, get I haven't seen some of my more interesting characters for a while. Not that they're necessarily good. In fact, White Spawn's good. The yeah, rest are okay. Think across the last 20 issues, I think we only saw the Plague Surgeon once, and the Apothecary once. Yeah, we haven't seen the Chaplain much either. Yeah, not for a long time no. either. But, uh, but that said, I think we do. We sort of have the bulk of the collection, well, or two, two, we're three quarters of the way through, so we would have most of them. But a lot of the squads we have are now filled out, especially for the Space Marines. Yeah, I mean, the, by the, by issue 40, the end of the previous board, we had a lot of characters and some troops. Mm -hmm. But now we have, well, as you can see on the screen, 20 Poxwalkers and 10 Cultists. Yeah, 10, in, 10 Intercessors. Yeah, a load of more Intercessors. You fi filled out the, the squads. The Hellblasters finally. and the Inceptors. Yeah, they're all now actually legal size units, like within the main game. Yeah, I think the only li unit left that's not a legal size technically is a Tainted Cohort. Oh, but okay. we don't get any more Terminators, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you finally got some anti-tank weapons. Yep. Um, you've got some bikes, which are not not so useful. But mm, the attack bike, which is mm. anti-tank weapons with caveats. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought I made out of paper and dreams. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Well, I just have to hope you don't shoot out. And I got two more ludicrously tough vehicles that are really quite yep. powerful. Finally, at least I killed the plague burst. You did. You you killed it. Yeah. Which we haven't seen it die yet. I guess other things we've had that have appeared: uh, command points and stratagems. Yeah, I do feel that they were. I think it took them a really long time to introduce command points and stratagems. So maybe from if you're a new player, it's nice to be able to get tons of time to practice and just have to remember them and time to use them. And yeah. the stratagems we got. Well, some of them we some, seen. some some of them we still haven't seen, and some of them are really good. Uh, like cloud of flies is really good. Whereas uh, stuff like armor of contempt, it's not really. I don't think yeah. it's worth spending a command point for. And uh, whatever it is, chaos familiar of Nurgle. Very unlikely to ever use that. 
and actually we talk about the fact that we have heard nothing about the New Spaceman Codex. Yeah, that's a- apart from some artwork. There is artwork. Yeah, from they it. use artwork from it, and and they do use like FAQ versions of some of the rules, like concealed positions. Yes, is the FAQ version version, but they use like the old version, the all the stratagems and stuff are from the old Space Marine Codex. Yeah. Despite the fact we're now a good couple of months from publication of Codex Space Marines, we simply don't know if we're going to get the more up-to-date rules. And I imagine it's going to be even worse for... Is it just recently started in France? So, I mean, are they going to get the new rules or the old rules? Because it was the point of releasing the magazine if they're out of date, and it's going to trip up new players, I think. Yeah. Well, actually, it's a good question if you're listening and you're in a country that, you know, if, if you're not in the UK, and somewhere that started later, presumably you're getting these, these magazines exactly the same as we've got them. So, you know, by the time you get to issue 60 in your country, you may well be using rules that are like a year out of date almost, or, yeah. six, or like six months out of date. Oh, because no, it'd be o- yeah, it'd be over a year. Yeah, I mean, if you're in France, you, I think it's only just six issues so far, or something like that, maybe first 10. In 50 weeks' time, which is nearly a year, are, you, are they still going to be giving you out-of-date Space Marine rules? I hope not. Anyway, so we don't know what's going to happen about that, and it looks possibly like the contents of this were fixed a long time ago. They may have actually written these issues a long time ago. Yeah, but there, there have been leaks and stuff, and some of the contents have actually changed. Issue 61, the contents did are oh, slightly different. In, but actually, thinking about it, they did release the poster at the beginning that had the whole contents, and barring one or two things that changed slightly, it's basically the same stuff. Yeah, and, it, and it's actually been sort of when you've gotten items as well as changed. Yeah. Well, I imagine it was all just planned in advance. Yeah. So I think that's all we have to say about uh, this mission. So if you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe and uh, leave any comments what you thought of the battle, if you've played the scenario, how did you get on, uh, what do you think of the collection up to this point. And again, if you're, if you're not in the UK or if you're in a country that speaks a different language, I suppose, uh, do, are you using the new Space Marine rules or the old ones? Let us know. Um, we've been the Tabletop Donkeys and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.